is very simply it's about the cycling of carbon through natural systems, through plants, through soils, through the ocean, and it back out into the atmosphere. In the natural carbon cycle, there's a lot of fluxes of carbon dioxide. So carbon goes in and out of the ocean, in and out of the terrestrial biosphere every year. The carbon is constantly flowing between these different systems and large amounts of carbon moves all the time. I mean, in the terrestrial biosphere, in the trees and the forests, it's very easy to see. If you live in, the, in a place that has a forest area with seasons, you see in the winter, the trees, they have no leaves. And the spring comes and the leaves build up. This is all good carbon dioxide that goes in the leaves. And in the fall, in the autumn, when the leaves fall down, then the carbon is emitted back in the atmosphere. So you have a huge signal there uh, of CO2 going in and out of the atmosphere. So the ocean will take up CO2. It dissolves in the surface of the ocean. And also when you, um, uh, uh, the ocean will release CO2 to the atmosphere. And that depends on the concentration of CO2 in the atmosphere and the concentration of CO2 in the ocean and they form a balance with each other. So there's a continuous massive exchange of carbon dioxide between the atmosphere and the land and the atmosphere and the ocean that um, is roughly in balance until we introduce human change. So the experiment that we're inadvertently perhaps conducting with the climate system is to move huge volumes of carbon from these stores undergrounds in the form of fossil fuels and bringing them to the surface and burning them and adding this carbon to the atmosphere. What we're doing now is putting everything out of balance. So we're adding carbon to the atmosphere. It's new carbon. It's not part of the natural cycle. It's one that we've dug out of the fossil reservoir where they were stored and we've put them back in the atmosphere. So this is new carbon and it puts the system out of balance. Although the human emissions are much smaller than the natural fluxes, the natural fluxes approximately are in balance. And so they're not causing a net increase of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Um, the human emissions, however, are very rapid and the natural systems don't have time to respond to them. And so you get a net imbalance of uh, raised carbon dioxide concentrations in the atmosphere. It's unequivocal that car the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is increasing and is increasing fast and is increasing faster than ever. Oh, the rate of change now is incredibly rapid. And what's more, it's pushed us outside of the bounds of what we've seen in terms of atmospheric concentration it, throughout the ice ages. We have not had uh, levels of CO2 at 400 parts per million by volume in uh, 800,000 years of history. In the Earth's past, um, throughout, deep in and out of the ice ages, um, the concentration of CO2 in the atmosphere ranged between about 180 parts per million and 280 parts per million. And it took thousands of years for it to change between those states. The difference is now it's gone up to 350 and even topping 400 parts per million on a, on a single day basis. Um, and that's happened over a period of a couple of hundred years. Every single generation is emitting more than the previous generation because I mean, the emission of CO2 is increasing exponentially. And we, we emitted so far, if, if you start from the beginning, which is like the, I mean, the industrial, industrial revolu revolution in 1750 or something, when we started slowly I mean, to burn fossil fuel, I mean, from that time up to today, we emitted something like 2,000 gigatons of CO2. More than half of this has been emitted over the last 50 years. And we know where that CO2 is coming from because we do the isotopes of the carbon. We know it's coming from fossil fuels. So carbon is increasing in the atmosphere, but it doesn't entirely stay there. So about half of the emission, maybe even a bit more than half of the emission that we put in the atmosphere end up in the natural environment. It end up, ends up in the ocean and in the forest. So the carbon cycle today absorbed about half of the emissions we put in the atmosphere. So we emit, as I said, 40 gigatons of CO2 per year. About half of it, 20 gigatons of CO2, are taken back from the atmosphere by the land and by the ocean. There's a multitude of different processes that remove carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. So, for example, the uh, dis uh, CO2 from the atmosphere dissolves in the surface of the ocean, and then that's turned over and taken into the deep ocean, and really for an amount of CO2 to be completely removed from the atmosphere, it has to be completely dissolved and go down into the deep ocean. And then we're talking about geological timescales. 
so hundreds of thousands of years. So what happens when we put carbon emissions into the atmosphere, new carbon from, from burning fossil fuel or from deforestation, what happens is it takes a long time for this carbon to readjust in, in the land and ocean. Eventually, if we're prepared to wait long enough, so that's thousands of years, a, a lot of this carbon, maybe 70%, will end up in the ocean. And the reason this takes time is that you have, you have different adjustment times. So the CO2 goes in the surface ocean, it takes about one year to dissolve, but how it is transported from the ocean surface to the intermediate and to the deep ocean depends on the, on the ocean circulation. And the ocean circulation uh, takes hundreds to a thousand years to mix the entire ocean. So that's the time scale that is really relevant here, is take a molecule of CO2, we've put it in the atmosphere, how long is it going to come, take before it ends in the deep ocean? So about 65 to 80% of the carbon dioxide pulse that's put into the atmosphere will be removed within about two to 200 years. The rest of it, the remaining sort of 35% will take between 2 and 20 millennia to be completely removed from the atmosphere. So roughly you have to think whatever we're doing today, whatever CO2 is being emitted, roughly a third of it is going to stick around essentially, you know, forever really when you consider it in our lifetime. We can't change the atmosphere the chemistry with one of the main constituents, carbon dioxide, by 25% and expect nothing to happen. You change your diet by 25%. You decide you're going to start consuming 25% more calories. You don't change your exercise or anything else. You can't realistically expect nothing to happen. And that's what we have to understand, that if we change fundamentally our atmospheric chemistry, we can't expect climate to stay the same.